What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin and today I was going to show you how I care for my large jade plants. Now, I know there are a couple different species, different subsets, different kinds of jade, silver dollar, regular, compact, Crosby's compact, uh, but I am doing the focus more on Crassula ovata, and uh, the first one that I have here in the blue pot uh, was so to me as Crassula ovata Crosby's compact. Say that 12 times fast, that's pretty complicated. <laughs> this one is really good for bonsai i mean they all pretty much are great for bonsai but it, it doesn't get too big i think at most it gets to be about three feet tall by about three feet wide um and then the second one i have here is the crassula ovata golem and then this third one the uh bigger one here it is the golem one as well but these are my large jade plants and i wanted to tell you a little bit about them and what it takes to actually keep them thriving and taking well care of and making sure they're not idiolated or sick or unsightly uh, but actually getting to that large kind of desired bonsai statuesque kind of form that a lot of us come to love these plants for so i tell you if you're ever looking for a plant that's easy to take care of that's not really toxic it is a little toxic but it's not really toxic toxic uh, and doesn't require too much care, uh, too much in the way of like watering and love and all that rest of the other stuff that you'd have to do with your bonsai trees or your orchids or your ferns or anything like that. These guys you can keep for a long time and almost forget about them. They really are easy plants to take care of and they essentially take care of themselves. Now you do have to water them a little bit and make sure that they have the right amount of light and other than that, you can pretty much forget about these plants. They don't really get too fussy when it comes to soil. There is a little bit that you need to know about the soil, uh, but other than that, they don't eat a whole lot. They don't have too much in the way of like pests, aside from your other basic house plants out there and the same problems that they may get. Uh, but these plants are great plants to have because they've lived for quite a long time and have been known to be passed down from generation to generation to generation. They can live that long and they don't take too much to care for them. And they're really cool bonsai looking plants. I love a jade plant. You cannot go wrong with them. And they're super cost affordable too. If you don't have a whole lot of money, you can get one for like three or four dollars. And then after like four or five years, you'll get one to be about this size. Uh, but to get this size, you do have to invest quite a bit of time in these guys. Uh, but I'd say about a decade and uh, you get one about this size right here. They're not very expensive plants. And even if you were to buy one this size off eBay, you're looking at maybe a hundred, a hundred and twenty dollars and you can get a really cool one on there uh, for this size of the golem or of the compacts and um, they're not too crazy expensive either now we'll go in and tell you that these plants are from the kind of tropics and subtropics of Africa or South Africa and around Mozambique so around the southern tip of Africa on up to about eastern side so they are native to an area that gets a decent amount of sunlight uh, and gets a decent amount of humidity. Uh, so they are really kind of warm tropical plants, but they are kind of understory plants too. They are kind of like a bush, a compact little bush that doesn't get too tall or too wide. Uh, but they're almost kind of invasive uh, species. They're not classified as invasive, uh, but I know some places where they kind of hail to, they can be almost considered invasive. Uh, but they are really easy to care for and as long as they're not getting too much sunlight and they get just a moderate maybe a little bit less than a moderate amount of rain they're happy they don't fuss too much uh, but I will tell you about light with these guys I have mine in a south facing uh, exposure and they don't get south kind of direct sunlight I've got them scooted back about two feet and I've got blinds and some curtains so it is kind of filtered bright sunlight these plants get and they're happy with that uh, they can't take too much direct sunlight I shouldn't say they can't take too much direct sunlight and when you're deciding on a plant and how much light to give it you always want to consider the cuticle of any plant 
Now the cuticle is a kind of covering of the entire epidermis of a plant. And the cuticle is responsible for keeping the plant safe and protected from the direct sunlight. Now they have to build up a tolerance with their cuticle. You can't just take a plant that you've gotten from like Walmart or Lowe's that's probably been inside underneath the ceiling and maybe, maybe had just a little bit of bright filtered sunlight, just a little sliver that actually hits these leaves. And if you take that plant and it's been sitting in the store for a couple of months and you set it in a window that gets a lot of bright, direct bright sunlight, you'll burn that plant up quicker than you can say death. And that plant will probably die if left unchecked. So you always want to err on the side of caution when you're getting any plant and assuming that it has no established cuticle and that you want to introduce it into the sunlight slowly and then uh, each day maybe go up at about 20 or 30 minute increments and then set it in direct sunlight for the first day for about 20 minutes, scoot it back and the next day do about 40, maybe close to about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, somewhere around that. And then the third day go up to almost about an hour. And then you just kind of want to go up a little bit for about a week. Once you get to about two hours of direct sunlight, you could probably go ahead and leave your plant in direct sunlight for a little bit longer. But you're just trying to set up that base tan line for your plant. Because if not, you'll burn the plant right away and it'll die. Uh, but if you catch it in time, you may be able to save the plant. But you do want to kind of build up its tolerance to the direct sunlight slowly before you just kind of let it go and leave it out there unchecked. But once you've set up the cuticle, the plant will be able to take direct sunlight for longer periods of time. Now with established jade plants, they can take anywhere from about four to six hours of direct sunlight. Uh, but like I said, mine's got kind of filtered light and it gets kind of bright light throughout the most part of the day, the around noon, a little bit after, uh, and then early morning, or late in the afternoon, I'll turn the LED lights on and let him supplement his kind of growth through that. So he'll get uh, some direct sunlight in about noon. And then for a couple hours, around four or five, I'll probably turn the uh, LEDs on and then he'll have those on for about four or five hours. And then they'll go off uh, and that'll be about what they get. And they seem happy with that. Although this bigger one over here looks like he's starting to actually get a little idiolated. And I can tell because the inner nodes, uh, the section in between each leaf segment, uh, towards the bottom of the branching of the plant, it's kind of small. But then you can get up here to the top part and you can see probably about maybe an inch, inch and a half or so is starting to actually increase that inner node. And basically it's looking for sunlight and it's doing whatever it can to kind of stretch itself out to try and make it up to that direct sunlight that it thinks it can detect. So I've since moved him to a brighter location and after a while i will kind of balance back out. I may actually have to come in here and trim a little bit uh, because once he's got that little gap higher in there, it won't be able to kind of fill that back in unless you put it in direct sunlight and he's no longer having to stretch out. But uh, you may have to come in here with some pruning shears and kind of trim these uh, higher inner node spaces out uh, but eventually it will correct itself and look better as long as you introduce it to the right amount of sunlight on there. All right, now next I want to talk about watering and what I have to do to water these large guys. Now these are jade plants, so they are succulents and they do store a great deal of water in these kind of fleshy looking leaves all over the plant. Now, they are native to the tropics and subtropics. A lot of those places do kind of get a little arid sometimes and may not get quite a lot of rain, but they are succulents. So they are storing a great deal of water in these stems and in these leaves. Uh, so they can go extended periods in between waterings without getting too much water in between. So you just want to make sure that uh, whenever you water your plant, you do let the media dry out in between the watering sessions. So about, Every, in the growing season, I'll water these guys every five to, uh, no, I'd say probably every seven to 10 days. And usually I'll take them and I'll stick them in the bathtub and I'll just kind of spray them down with a detachable uh, shower head and uh, make sure that they don't get too much water in the pot. As you can tell, they do have these little saucers on the bottom. But with these guys, I knew that I was going to put these jade plants in there. So I went ahead and drilled through the bottom of the cash pot to make sure that uh, water will actually kind of drain freely. If you do have your jade uh, in one of these pots, make sure that if you don't go ahead and drill through the bottom so that all the excess water can drain away freely, 
that uh, you do tip the pot over after about 20 minutes and let the excess water in the bottom of the pot drain freely. Jade plants love their water but they hate sitting and standing water all day. So uh, they do like to get some water, and then after about 20 minutes, I'll go ahead and tip the plant over and uh, let all that water drain out the saucer. Now, I don't have to do that with these guys because in both of these cash pots, I went ahead and drilled through the saucer so all that excess water will drain through it and out into the bathtub and down the drain. But like I said, if yours does have a saucer in it, make sure you tip yours over after about 20 minutes because if you leave all that excess water in the saucer, it's not gonna be able to drain away freely and it's gonna hold it in here and all this saturated soil is just gonna stay wet and your feet of your uh, shallow roots of your jade pot or your jade plant will actually succumb to root rot relatively quick quickly because these uh, plants will succumb to root rot really quick. Uh, and that's actually the leading cause of death with these plants. It's just kind of newer gardeners not understanding that it has to dry all the way in between and sadly, uh, if you caught my last video on my other jade plant that was beautiful, it died because I had it in a pot that wasn't letting it uh, drain off all the rest of that excess water and it uh, killed the plant really quickly. Uh, I didn't even notice because of the top of it, it looked like it had been dry, but uh, in here in the bottom where all the root mass and <coughs> all that sits in the middle it had just stayed constantly wet and it succumbed to root rot relatively quickly. So always make sure you stay on the side of caution. Stick your finger down in there because the top part may look dry and like there's no water in it, but if you stick your finger down in there about to the first or second knuckle, you can feel moisture down in there. And that all has to dry before you go ahead and water it again. Uh, especially during the growing season because if not, you're going to keep adding water to that and it's going to end up killing your roots. And drowning them out like i said they are fairly shallow but they do go down in the soil a little bit especially with this plant this size so you want to make sure that the uh, middle part isn't getting too wet either and it actually has time to drain away before you add more water on top and then create this vicious cycle consequently uh if you do notice that you are picking your plant up and it's dropping some leaves a lot that typically is an indication that the plant isn't getting enough moisture so if you look and your plant seems to be healthy otherwise but you notice it's dropping leaves that may be a sign that you need to actually give your plant a little bit more moisture and you're going too long in between waterings also you want to make sure that if you are like me and you set your pots in the tub and you spray them down that you turn the fan on uh, to help dry and wick away all that water from the stems and the leaves if you leave all that water on there it can end up uh, causing or inviting rot into your plant so it will actually wreak other problems with your plant so make sure that if uh, once you do spray it down you turn the fan on to help kind of wick some of that water away so you're not inviting pests or uh, any kind of rot in for your stems or your leaves or any other part of the plant typically you do want to actually just kind of water uh, the top of the soil and let it trickle down through there uh, and that's the best way to water it but uh, like I said if you do like I do and you spread the whole plant off just make sure you turn a fan on to help wick some of that moisture away all right and then another thing I wanted to mention is these jade plants are extremely uh, sensitive to the salts that may be in water so if you water your plant I wouldn't use tap water all the time a little bit's not gonna hurt it uh, but if you use a lot of kind of harder water or softened water that's used a lot of salts to actually soften that water or a limestone rich water or anything of that nature like Kentucky has uh, you may end up having problems with your jade plant that may actually stunt the plant or get it to uh, experience leaf drop or anything of that nature so make sure that if you uh, water and you have hard water or soft water or limestone rich or anything of that nature use distilled water for your plants uh, because that kind of nutrient buildup of the salts will kill your plant if left unchecked uh, and they are a little sensitive to that. So just kind of err on the side of caution and use distilled water or filtered water or even some rainwater. Now, if you live next to a large city like I do, I wouldn't use rainwater all the time, uh, but a little bit's not gonna hurt it either. So in checking with the soil, like I said, you always want to use soil that's made for cacti and succulents. Obviously you have succulent plants here, so you don't want something that has too much in the way of fertilizer uh, but the miracle Grow cacti, succulent, and palm, citrus, 
that is perfect for these guys. Uh, coincidentally, if you wanted to make your own, you could use a reputable potting soil and do about two parts potting soil to one part perlite or pumice. Or you can even use some kind of horticultural grade sand, like some builder sand. Essentially sand that's been rinsed a couple of times to get rid of any of that kind of salt buildup or that um, silica buildup. Uh, if it's been washed a couple of times and used for like construction or horticulture, that'll be okay. Uh, but a lot of that actually does have some kind of salts in it that may end up causing problems with your succulents again. But like I said, I use the cacti and the succulent and citrus uh, for milk grow, and that has enough in it to actually keep the plants happy and healthy and then let the excess water drain away uh, because soil uh, will actually hold on to it a little bit, but the sand will actually let the excess water drain away freely so you don't have to worry about it holding on to the excessive water and keeping it so soggy and saturated all day because as we know that'll kill your plant quicker than you can say it's dead. Also I wanted to let you know that uh, with the soil you want to make sure that your soil airs on the side of slightly acidic. You want it typically around 6.0 on up to around 7 and you don't want it to get too alkaline uh, I wouldn't go past seven if you could help it, just because alkaline soils are not beneficial to cacti and succulents. So uh, jades aren't too fussy. They can get away with a little bit of alkaline soil, but I wouldn't tempt the fates, and I would just keep it uh, on the side of acidic slightly if you could. You can go to Lowe's or Home Depot or your county extension office and they can test your soil for you and tell you how acidic it is or how alkaline your soil is and kind of tell you if you wanted to bring in some soil samples from a couple of your plots or on your land or whatever. They can test that out and tell you what that is uh, and tell you if you need to add some acidity booster or some lime or some sulfur to actually help you get your soil to where you want it to be. Uh, but like if you're using soil for a lot of your fruits and vegetables like blackberries, blueberries, uh, azaleas, or something like that, that would be fine for your cacti and succulents too. Like I said, you want them to be a little around 6.0, uh, slightly acidic is beneficial for your cacti and succulents, and alkaline soil is not. And as we know, if your soil is kind of alkaline and your plants need a little bit of acidity, that can affect the growth of your plants and how much nutrients it's able to uptake and actually store and look its best. So I wouldn't kind of brush that off to the side and not check that and leave it undetected. Make sure you actually have some kind of knowledge of where your plants fall with the acidity scale. All right, now a lot of times people will leave these guys outdoors to get them some sunlight. Like I said, you got to be careful with that direct sunlight or you could scorch your plants and kill them if it's left unchecked. Uh, but if you do decide to keep yours outdoors, uh, make sure you bring it in when you notice that the plant is going to be experienced weather around 55 or below 55 degrees. Uh, they can't take cold weather at all and uh, a plant of this size might take a light frost but I doubt it. I wouldn't even tempt the fates with that because if temperatures get below 50, you can experience some stunted growth. And if it gets down to a frost, it could actually kill a plant of this size or smaller, or even a plant of this size because that cold weather will come in and freeze all these beautiful, thick, luscious little leaves and uh, stems. So make sure that if you know it's gonna get cold, you bring your plant indoors. And always check every day before you set them out there. And if you're not sure, set an alarm and bring your plants in just to be sure. Because if you get a plant of this size and you invested this much time and energy in keeping this plant alive and healthy and looking its best like a bonsai tree, and you have that wiped away in just one night, and <sighs> nothing can prepare you for that when you come out there and you see your whole plant collapse like that. And it's just a big old pile of mush and you know you can't save it and you know you messed up so just make sure you set that alarm and bring your plant in if you know it's going to be cold or there's a chance that it might get cold because you don't want to lose your plant to cold weather just like that uh, that would suck to invest all that time and energy in there and just one night forget it and then it's all gone it's happened to me all right now one of the uh second to last things i want to talk about is fertilizer with these guys and as i said previously these aren't heavy feeders if you have recently transplanted your plant coincidentally you don't have to transplant your these plants that often i think every three or four years is sufficient these plants love to be pot bound so they don't need to be transplanted all that often and that's another reason why they're great plants because you don't have to come in here like the willow 
bonsai tree that I did uh, a little bit ago, you have to transplant that once or twice a year. But these guys, you can wait three, four, or five years before you have to transplant it again. They have these really shallow, compact, little insignificant roots that can kind of stand to be encased in a small pot. I think for both of these, all three of these pots, these plants will be fine for another three or four years in here, and I've already had them in there for about a year. So yeah, just make sure you don't forget. Uh, but if you do, you don't need to transplant them that often, like I said, every three or four years. But if you went ahead and you transplanted your uh, jade plant within a year, after about that year, you do not have to feed your plant at all. miracle Grow will feed your plant for about the first six months. And uh, like I said, your plant's not gonna be able to digest all that food that quickly. So for about a year, your plant will be fine in this pot with that fertilizer in there. After that year, you can go ahead and fertilize every three or four months. They aren't heavy feeders at all. And if you are feeding your plant to wake mine up, I haven't done it with these guys because they've been in their pot for about a year. But next spring, I'll probably give them a little bit of a fish emulsion just to kind of wake them up a little bit. And then halfway through the growing season, I'll probably use a little bit of liquid fertilizer to mix in with these. And I'll dilute that by at least by half. And then after that, they probably don't need to be fed again. Like I said, they don't, they're not very heavy uh, feeders and they are very sensitive to the salt builds up in fertilizers and in water. So make sure you're not tempting the fates and feeding them too much or giving them too much uh, water from the tap that could end up uh, adding more to that fertilizer salt or uh, the salt water that's in there from softening your water or hard water because that'll build up in there over time and kill your plants. So I don't feed mine that often at all and they are happy with the soil and the substrates that they have in there. And then the last thing I want to talk about these plants um, is the toxicity and pests. Like I said, they are toxic to dogs and cats. They're not really toxic to birds and they're not really toxic to people either, but they can be. So I wouldn't tip the fates with that and make sure that uh, if you do have little ones running around, I wouldn't keep this plant or I would keep it secluded where they can't get to it. Any of your fur babies or your real babies, because if they drop leaves kind of easy and they come in here and they start chewing on them, you can have a problem. But they are slightly toxic, especially to dogs and cats. Um, and then with the pests, they just kind of have the a normal pests. Aphids, uh, scale, mealybugs, spider mites, and the last two, uh, end up having a problem if you have kind of dry, arid, bone dry areas in your home. Uh, as long as you're keeping the humidity in your home around 30, 40 percent, 50, your jade plant will be okay. They don't really need high humidity levels, but if you keep it bone dry and arid in your home, then you can invite uh, mealybugs and spider mites. So that's one reason why I throw mine in the tub and kind of spray them down, because if I give them a little bit of humidity once or twice a week, uh, or once every other week, that usually keeps uh, those pests that like it bone dry at bay. Um, and then the rest, you can kind of come in and see uh, if you do kind of see any kind of filaments or any kind of uh, white cottony mealybugs moving around or any kind of uh, bumps that may indicate scale, you can kind of throw these plants in there and spray them off. Now, if you do have scale, you'll have to use like a little knife or your thumbnail and kind of come in here and kind of pick some of the scale off. But the rest of them, you can use some isopropyl rubbing alcohol on there too. I, wasn't, I wouldn't use neem oil or anything of that nature with these plants uh, because that can bother them a little bit, but you can use some isopropyl alcohol on a little cotton swab or a washcloth and come in here and get over and under every leaf and on the stems and then uh, that'll help kit combat a lot of those pests and keep them at bay too. Now I do know that they can have a little bit of a problem with uh, powdery mildew and root rot, but those are typical of any other kind of house plant. And as always, I'd like to take a special moment to thank my patrons. And then I want to thank my top tier patrons like Thien. Thank you. I'd also like to thank my other patrons like David and Heather. If you are interested in supporting my channel through Patreon, check the link in the description box below. As always, your donations go to keeping the lights on, the LEDs running, clean water and food for all the plants. As you know, being a plant daddy can be hard. Alright guys, well this has been Justin reminding you that if you can, go out and plant a tree. Let's reforest the world. And while you're at it, don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know if you've ever had any kind of success or failures with any of the Jade family. And don't forget, hit the subscribe button or the bell next to it. That way you'll know anytime that I've uploaded a new video. You guys take it easy, have a good one, and don't forget, always plant prudently.
Thank you, YouTube.